Yes, my name is Harish Krishnan, Chartered Accountant hailing from Hyderabad. I've been dealing this uh, subject of ITSM for the last five years. So this is uh, one attempt to make your IT subject a little simpler, right? Uh, in the quickest possible time, let me try and revise all the five chapters for you uh, in the easiest possible manner so that uh, you can watch the video as many number of times as you want before going to the exam in the short time so that it makes it easy for you to write the exams. Now once, uh, one statutory warning before watching this video is you have to be well prepared before watching this because I'm going to be fast and on point. Two, that is this is a revision video so obviously once you are aware of the concept only then you can make the most of it right so let me start off very quickly with chapter number one you all know what chapter number one is chapter number one talks about business process management business process management three keywords business process and management business state of being busy state of being busy then we have something to do with process process is a very important definition because the whole chapter revolves around that series or a sequence of steps process is a series or sequence of steps which converts what converting inputs into outputs that's what process is all about you know what is management is an art of getting things done by the others art of getting things done by others so this is what this whole topic is all about business process and management in business process management we are talking about how an organization with process and without process will work on right that could be one of the very important questions in the beginning of this chapter that you see is the differences that exist between functional organization functional organization versus a process organization a functional organization works in the form of departments while you have process organizations working in the form of teams functional organizations are headed by managers while each process is headed by somebody called as a process owner right so these are the differences and then of course in functional organization we work everything together work happens together while work is split between teams and there is cross functional work is cross functional so you see if there is a traditional organization working simply based on functions it works in the form of departments having managers and they work together as an entire unit then when you talk about a process oriented organization it works in the form of teams where there is a process owner and there are cross functional connections between them right so that is the first topic that we are discussing and then let's move on to the next topic called as process management what is process management guys is one of the very important short answer questions asked in the exam in the past five steps are there in process management step number one is to define the process define process step number two is to map the process map process step number three is performance measurement performance measurement step number four is to standardize this process standardize this process and step number five stick to it follow it that is called what adherence so what is business what is process what is management that's the introduction and then we've discussed the difference between a functional organization and a process oriented organization which is one important part and then of course the concept of process management let me take you through the nine point definition of what bpa is all about bpa the next important definition is business process management definition then we can talk about its principles and practices as the next part of the discussion, right? So we have what is process, what are the differences between functional and traditional and then we are discussing about what is process management. Then we have, uh, yeah, before we go to the definition of business process management, let's talk about the classification. Classification of business processes classification of a business process what is the classification of a business process guys 
we talk about uh, two things organizational organizational and then we have something called as operational under organizational and operational so we have in all five the topmost thing that is there for the top level is called the business strategy a strategy is broken down into a series of goals goals are further broken down into organizational business process organizational business process while they are further broken down into operational business process and then lastly and the most important thing where we have implemented business process where we have implemented business process so these are the five uh, categorization or classification of the business process right from having a very big business strategy to what we have in terms of the business process right all right then moving up up next is what we have in terms of the nine point definition called business process management or bpm as it is what is the definition of bpm let me make it into three into three parts so first three achievement achievement of organizations achievement of organizations objectives so achievement or nation objectives how the question is how to three activities improvement through improvement management through improvement management and control improvement management control the next question is of what of what are you improving you going to improve the essential business processes essential business process guys right? this is a simple definition of bpm achievement of our nation's objectives through improvement management and control of essential business process right then let me take you through two very important short answer questions after this are what are bpm's principles bpm principles and how do you do it bpm practices bpm has very four simple principles first and foremost processes are assets process are assets then you talk about continuous improvement or you can second one you can say we talking about consistent delivery consistent delivery of value to customers and then point number 3 which is talking about continuous improvement in process because you can't set up a process once and forget it for the rest of the life right continuous improvement in process and one of the most important points that i put a star for is being use of it now there's nobody who told you that use of it is compulsory right so it can be used as or you can simply say it is an essential enabler it is a essential enabler nothing is compulsory guys it is only a essential enabler right so those are the four bpm principles as we move on we talk about bpm's practices what are bpm practices bpm practices you have uh, nine points to come in eight points to cover here the first two let me give you a technique here i'm going by 2 2 1 then i have 3 then i have 1 now what is this logic of 2 2 1 3 1 2 points who will do this first bpm practice who has to implement the bpm senior management senior management has to uh, push this process of bpm and then they are supposed to appoint process owners appoint process owners this is the first two steps the next technique remember the next two steps who are the ones who are going to do it these are the two things guys always remember when any process is being implemented it happens as a top down approach implemented as a top down approach implemented as a top down or by let's say senior management it's implemented by senior management but always remember a work is done by the bottom level right so executed executed by or executed as a bottom up approach 
So you covered four points. Who will implement this? Senior management and they'll appoint process owners. Then it's implemented as a top-down approach and executed as a bottom-up approach. And when you move on, right, you talk about IT. IT can be used as essential enabler. IT can be used as a essential enabler. Then we have three points to talk about when it comes to with respect to employees. Right? Work collaboratively. Work collaboratively across departments. Then continuously train workforce. Continuously train your workforce. All the three points related to the employees, guys. Then align rewards. You want to give rewards to the employees to make them work much better in the process? Align rewards to performance of employees. Right? And then lastly, you can go with both incremental or radical approach. You can go for both an incremental approach or a radical approach. Guys, so this is what are the basic points with respect to what is being classified in BPM, the BPM's uh, classification, BPM definition, BPM principles and BPM practices. Let me also in the same frame include uh, something that you will again see in the second chapter but it's a simple concept right now I'm going to call it as the BPM life cycle. BPM life cycle. What are the five stages in BPM life cycle? BPM life cycle talks about analysis phase, analysis two, design, three, implementation, analysis, design, implementation, four, run and monitor, and five, to make the best use of this called as optimization. So make it the best process once you implement it. It's called what? Optimization. So this is exactly what we have in terms of the entire concept of BPM. These are business process, their principles, their practices and of course the life cycle. Then we have a topic on BPM implementation guys where we talk about considering some key factors and why do you have to do it and what you are doing it. Let me take you through one more very important question that comes up in the exam here are the benefits and risks of BPA. Let me also put it here, the benefits and risks of BPA, right? If I look at the benefits, there are three benefits, one, two and three benefits and there of course two risks. Let me talk about those also. Three benefits here are, of course you will have savings in cost, savings in cost. That's one of the reasons why we do BPA is to save cost. Then it is all about providing some kind of a customer service, right? And since you are providing that kind of a customer service, it is definitely being automated. So it's much faster when compared to the others, right? So you have faster service to customers. And one another key point that you need to remember is by doing this, you will stay ahead, stay ahead in competition. So these are the three benefits, guys, savings in cost. Staying ahead in competition and of course faster service to customers. Then the two risks that are there, well, till now we didn't have automation. Now that we have automation, there are a lot of people who might lose jobs. So there is a risk of losing jobs. There is a risk of losing jobs and on the other side there is a false sense of security. That's it. So that's the frame right now on your screen which contains all the concepts of what BPM and BPA and its advantages that is benefits and risks are all about. There is one small concept called BPM technology where you can talk about the equation which is called as business process management plus IT. BPM plus IT which is nothing but BPA. BPA is business process automation plus IT. So let me write that equation here for you. BPA is equal to BPM plus IT. Right. So this is what it is. And then uh, we did discuss about value chain analysis in strategic management. If not, let me quickly recap. Your Michael Porter's value chain analysis classifying the entire set of activities into primary activities and support activities, right? Primary activities are those right from getting the raw material in inbound logistics, operations, outbound logistics, marketing and sales and after sales service. All these are called as what? They are all called as primary activities. Then as we move on, we have support activities in the nature of procurement, technology, infrastructure and human resources helping us to do these work. 
then there is a small concept in connection to this called as value chain automation now all that you need to understand is wherever there is value being added like in what just we classified as michael porter's value chain all those functions will now be automated by the use of it so as to get much more effect on this right so that's what is about uh, bpa bpm value chain automation and all that let's move on to the next concept which has been asked in the exam twice which is talking about accounting information systems automation let me take you through the three points accounting information system automation so we have uh, three steps the three steps are collection and storage of data recording of transactions and of course one of the most important things in accounting is segregation of duties you might definitely not want to give one person the complete control because he might end up doing a fraud as such right so let's go with the three points guys here what is an accounting in system automation and these are called the three functions three functions three functions of uh, accounting information system collection and storage collection and storage of information recording of transaction recording of transaction collection storage recording of transaction and then of course segregation of duties right how do we segregate duties or, or segregation of duties is important because one person cannot be given the complete control then all right moving next are the various cycles bpm cycles if you see we have finance cycle revenue cycle finance cycle revenue cycle then we have expenditure cycle then we have two common points hr cycle and general ledger cycle and then last but the most important one in this slot i'm putting a start to it called the data processing cycle this can come up as a separate short answer guys data processing cycle is talking about data input four steps here data storage data processing and of course you have something called as information output now a lot of students make a mistake here in the exam the right data output a processed form of data is information so you can never have data as the output right so when data is given as input you have to be very clear in writing the answer saying it as information output okay that is what data processing cycle is all about that is topic number uh eight for you where we talked about what is accounting information system the three uh functions the bpm cycles and of course the data processing cycle as such moving up next i'm taking you to topic number two where we are talking about three important theories theories of management i think we will again discuss this in management so let me not take a lot of time here let me keep it very simple but what is relevant here i will discuss that much first of which we are talking about six sigma guys you know what is six sigma six sigma talks about achieving perfection up to 99.9966% of defect free products right so that is what we are actually inching for but that and all is not discussed much here in it in it they just told you from a process right how existing process how existing process can follow six sigma that is what they discussed in your limited syllabus we have a technique called what d m a i c what is d m a i c guys d for define m for measure a for analyze what is i i is the key thing here improve when can you improve something when it's already in existence that's why i talked about existing process is there a process i mean is there a six sigma methodology for new process yes we discussed in static management dma dv why is it dma dv define measure analyze are continuing to be the same d for define and v for verify so you will define a process and verify whether it's working but here it is improve and control any corrective action you need to take so these two are key points guys dma continue to remain the same dma ic in six sigma what define measure analyze improve and control then let me move on to the second theory of management that's called total quality management where quality is at the prime point of focus 
where in tcm follows something called as a pdca cycle what is pdca cycle guys p for plan d for do c for check and a for act first you will plan on what to do then you will do right as such when you do you should know whether you got the result or not so you will plan and then do it if you get the result very good that is what you are doing in checking stage plan do check if you got the result very good if you didn't get the result then act upon it then again go again plan again do this is the cycle that runs in the third one is a dramatic transformation concept called business process reengineering bpr is all about three things guys what are those fundamental rethinking fundamental rethinking radical redesign fundamental rethinking radical redesign and achieving dramatic improvement these are the three keywords in bpr so bpr is all about what wiping away all existing process which is what is called as a clean slate approach you can find these words clean slate approach which means wiping away all the existing process and coming up with absolutely new process then the next but the most important question in bpr is about the success factors there are six success factors in bpr guys first is i need commitment from the entire organization organization wide commitment right organization wide commitment is what i need then configuring the entire thing into bpr teams right why do i want to configure the entire thing into bpr teams because this entire thing can't be applied once and for all so i will break them down into teams and each team will have a maximum of 10 number of people right then all that i need to do here is bpr analysis bpr analysis step number 3 then four have adequate it infrastructure what do you mean by having adequate infrastructure guys now one of the very important point that you need to remember at this juncture is whenever you are doing a bpr it is not compulsory for you to have uh, it into that process but whenever you are using it you need to have adequate it infrastructure because in today's generation improvement itself is about bringing it into picture right then topic number 5 you have to this is a big change process so you have to effectively manage change effectively manage change and six this is not a one day process continuous and ongoing so bpr is an ongoing and continuous improvement process so that's what we have in the three big uh, theories of six sigma tqm and bpr fundamental rethinking radical redesign dramatic improvement it's a clean set approach and then these six are the success factors that you need to focus on let me move out so you can see there so that is what info accounting information system and success factors are one last topic in topic number i mean chapter number 1 is all about mapping systems which is one of the very important concepts guys mapping system let me tell you the secret here one question has always been there in the exam in the last five attempts from mapping system so it's a very simple topic you know what mapping systems are it's about putting the right person in the right place by using some of these techniques and then representing it right so let me go with the five mapping systems entity relationship diagrams entity relationship diagrams where we have uh, three symbols to talk about one being the box the entity box where we will talk about the content then we have a diamond where we talk about what is called as relationship and then we have an oval which talks about the attributes so when you talk about mapping systems we have uh, three things all the world entities i mean all the world items are modeled into entities here then diamonds we have relationships and then of course ovals we have for attributes that is what it is all about so this is what entity relationship diagram is all about three parts then we have the dfds the data flow diagram data flow diagram the data flow diagrams talking about four parts four components you can say the four components are you have a entity 
again we have entity data stores where we have uh, boxes to represent the data store then we have uh, a process box and then of course a uh, data flow right so we have entity data store process and of course lastly we have uh, data flow that is nothing but arrow marks so this is what data flow is all about then we have uh, two types of data flow diagrams one and you can say types two types of dfds right a, a physical data flow diagram and a logical data flow diagram the third mapping system is all about flow charts i hope you know how to draw flow chart but let me still guide you with just an understanding what is flow chart graphical representation of an algorithm graphical representation of an algorithm is a flow chart and we have uh, system flow charts run flow ch program flow charts and all that so system flow charts we are talking about system flow charts and i hope you know the symbols right oval for start or stop start or stop a parallelogram for input box a rectangle for processing box then we have a diamond which is the decision box and a little extended box this is a print box and arrow marks and then the circle being used as a connector so the symbols of flow chart then uh, we have two simple things here decision trees and then decision tables decision trees and decision tables they talk about you know the decision tree is an inverted tree pattern where we have branches so we have uh, nodes nodes are what end points nodes are end points they represent if then rules they represent the if then rules what is supposed to do and how is supposed to do if then rules are represented if a decision tree it start like this it starts at the point and then it goes with two questions and from this point it goes to another two and this point it goes to another two if yes no and then this goes on this is the pattern of a decision tree while decision table you know like we have two things here, four things here conditions and actions under uh, conditions we have condition entries and condition stops then we have action action entries and action stops right again uh, a decision table is formed like this condition 1 condition 2 then we have action 1 action 2 all of which then it's taken as uh, if condition 1 is true you have true true false and false then it's taken as true false true and false then uh, you know if condition 1 is proper we will have the symbol of execute and then there's nothing here and then there is nothing here but in this case you are executing this this so generally this is represented in the form of a table so this is what are the five mapping systems one question has always been there in the exam guys right so that's what we have in our very first chapter let me quickly recap what we did we talked about business we talked about process we talked about management then we talked about bpm as a whole concept and then we moved on to discussing what is bpm and how is it implemented sub concepts in bpm then we moved on to bpa where we discuss about the benefits and risks of bpa then in topic number 2 we discuss the three theories of six sigma total quality management and of course business process reengineering and this being the last topic where we discuss the mapping systems i will bring next to you the chapter number 2 where we will be dealing uh, what is it and what are some of the it fundamentals eight topics in chapter number 2 let's come back with uh, chapter number 2 All right, let's continue with chapter number two now. Chapter number two has eight topics. Chapter two, I'm going to take you through all the eight topics. So, like we did in chapter one, let's go with chapter number two. Here, the first concept that we are dealing with is about the need for information technology, need for IT. It's a very simple topic. Three times it's been asked in the exam in the past, so you can 
simply go it's a very simple answer three points only what are the three points right need for it is that it improves communication capabilities communication capabilities you have data and information management data and information management and last but the most important one automation of business process automation of business processes all right on that note that's the first topic there very simple very easy one right moving on to topic number 2 topic number 2 talks about the connection between it and audit let me tell you not much of it is important there are only two three aspects that we need to concentrate in this topic so let me also focus only on those uh, i'm talking about connection between connection between it and audit connection between it and audit what is the connection between it and audit there are some points that we need to catch up here we have three points to talk about right uh what is so similar between audit and it is the three aspects the studying of technical aspects right first point you study technical aspects so in an audit which is between uh, it and audit when you consider the fact you have to study technical aspects when it comes to audit and then use certain unique techniques use unique techniques and use of audit software now these are the three concepts right what you see right now on screen the three concepts they are pretty much different when compared to what you see in audit procedures in it and in audit so these are the first i mean the the, the first concept here difference between audit in it and manual environment right so these are the three broad differences that we are actually talking about simple points then uh, that's all that's were important and then you look at one more topic is there in that particular point the last one which says uh, there are certain actions that the auditor has to take in terms of what exactly he is to do by using audit software let me take you through those three points also right you can put the heading for that particular point as uh, the auditor's concerns right so the other important concept that i'm putting here is auditor's concern auditor's concern and uh, there are three points under which the auditor's concern is categorized the first of which talks about right he has to apply some new criteria auditor should apply a new criteria while doing the audit right and then use unique techniques right use unique techniques which we already saw here the same way use unique techniques in cis environment and this last bothering is about audit software usage again right so these are the three concern points as well that he needs to focus on this topic is not much of you know having any more content to be discussed so those two concepts you focus that's more than enough but coming to topic number 3 which is one of the most important topics in chapter number 2 is all about bpa let me quickly help you revise the definition guys what is bpa when we talk about bpa is business process automation what is automation automation is all about removing the human element removing the human element removing the human element from existing business process from existing business process that's what you call as business process automation so removing the human element and using up computerized process that's what is bpa all about and then the next important concept in bpa is the eight steps involved in bpa though this we are going to discuss these eight steps once again in the fifth chapter there you will be talking about how to do these eight steps here we are only going to talk these eight steps first of which is what why bpa second step the most important one understanding rules and regulations step number 3 talks about documentation of existing process documentation of existing process all right guys point number 4 talks about very important point setting up of objectives and goals setting of objectives and goals 
Point number five talks about engaging a business process consultant. Point number six talks about calculating return on investment or calculating the ROI, which is what tells you whether the project is feasible or not. Then point number seven talks about what development of BPA. Now you have to do six basic steps, then talk about developing BPA and testing BPA or testing or implementing the BPA. Got it, guys? That's the eight points. Once again, everybody. Uh, why BPA? Understanding rules and regulations, documenting, setting of objectives and goals, engaging a business process consultant, calculating the ROI, development of the BPA, and testing and training the BPA. That's what BPA is all about. Then moving up, then we have uh, the three very important activities that are done in BPA, right? Uh, integration, orchestration, and automation. Three of the activities I will fit in that as well. So when you come to the three activities. Three activities we have uh, one is integration that is bringing different things under the same roof, orchestration that is about using different platforms to merge together and bring it together, and of course, automation is all about use of computers, right? And then, everybody, I hope uh, from the first chapter we already understood the BPA life cycle, which is given here again BPA life cycle, which talks about the five uh, stages analysis design implementation run and monitor i'm writing it again for you analysis design implementation run and monitor only these are given here the fifth step is not given here there it's about optimizing so in this chapter you're talking only about these four steps that's about your topic number three bpa and its sub concepts clear and then you have uh, some benefits of BPA being discussed that's already discussed in the first chapter. So we are continuing with topic number four, which talks about computing. What is computing guys? Any goal oriented activity, any goal oriented activity, any goal oriented activity which involves the use of or creating computers the use of or creating computers which is what is called as right computing the five sub disciplines of computing are five sub disciplines are very important this has been asked in the exam right first of which is called computer science it's a study of what it is and all that computer science two it talks about two things guys one is about creating computers which is both hardware and software called as computer engineering then it also talks about only creating software so that is software engineering software engineering and then i am going to talk about two things which you know is information systems and of course our subject information technology right those are the five sub disciplines in computing guys that's what is one of the very important concepts in this chapter right before i move to topic number five are you clear with all these four topics is a quick revision or an outlook let me move off the screen so yeah this is what all the four topics are and then let me now move on to topic number five where we will be talking about three concepts broadly in topic number five of chapter number two it talks about emerging technologies it talks about servers and the different types of servers and it also talks about the computer architecture let me give you in one frame what all that topic is all about so all right topic number five talks about computing technologies so topic number five computing technologies we discuss three broad concepts servers what is a server and what are the various types of servers that's what we are discussing in this concept right servers anything that gives you a response various types of server that are being discussed here are uh, print server file server web servers right etc you have a few types of that that's being discussed i think that is something that you can understand and do it the second concept that's more important that's being discussed here is the computer architecture. Computer architecture. 
Under the concept of computer architecture, we are discussing three broad concepts. One is called the instruction set architecture. Instruction set architecture, where we are talking about two very important concepts again called as reduced instruction set computing called the RISC and CISC complex instruction set computing. That is what it is all about. Then the complete arrangement of the entire aspects inside the computer is called the micro architecture and then the third part of this discussion talks about system design system design where I again have three concepts to be broken down what are three concepts in system design right it talks about direct memory access direct memory access which is called DMA or it's also called as the CPU offload, CPU offload mechanism, right? And in system design, we have buses and controllers, buses and memory controllers, where we're talking about what these buses are and how they are used in the business, right? Then we uh, see about system interconnects and buses. Then the last uh, buses also called system buses and let's say system interconnects. And then we have memory controllers, memory controllers. So this is what we have in architectural study of what computers are all about. Then moving ahead, the third topic is all about emerging technologies. Emerging technologies, where we are discussing about two concepts, one called the cloud computing, cloud computing. The other one is about mobile computing, there is nothing much to discuss in mobile computing. What is it? We will come back to it. Under cloud computing, we have what is cloud computing? So cloud definition is very clear guys, it's the three S's, server plus storage plus software, all this over the internet, over the internet, that is what is called as cloud. Then we are talking about cloud types. Over the four cloud types, public clouds, private clouds, hybrid clouds and then you have community clouds, right? And then moving on, we talk about the service models, cloud service models are there for you. We are talking about five of those, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, then you have software as a service network as a service and lastly we have communication as a service where you have cross platform applications like Skype and uh, WhatsApp and all those being communication as a service. So those are cloud, it's advantage, disadvantage being again discussed in the fifth chapter so I think you can go with it cloud, the types, the service models. Then coming to mobile computing you have uh, the com concept of components, what are the components of mobile computing? Right, we have three components broadly broken down into mobile hardware, mobile hardware, mobile software and communication, right, how it works, it works on wireless components and then of course we do talk about what is something to do with uh, the concerns, I wanted to focus on that point also, concerns in mobile computing, security, health hazards, so those are some points that one needs to consider in terms of mobile computing as well, right? So that is what we have in topic number 5, an extensive topic covering servers, computer architectures and emerging technologies, right? Let me move on to topic number 6 which talks about the information system layers, which talks about what? Information system layers. One of the very extensive concepts in this chapter is the information system layers. Let us see how much we can recap very quickly. Information system layers. Alright, we have six things to be divided guys. First of which let me talk about the computer hardware, computer hardware, software 
networks we have everything so first computer hardware hardware is again classified into input devices i am not writing the examples because i believe you know those right then we have processing devices which i will be discussing and then of course we do have output devices which we are again not much bothered with when it comes to processing right we have a temporary memory like in registers then we have ram and rom we also discuss about another very important short answer questions called virtual memory then we have cache memory and then of course we have secondary storage devices right secondary memory so these are all something where we are supposed to store and those are all the hardware that maintains i mean processing and storage devices then let's talk about what is called as an application software because okay let's say broadly after hardware system is classified into software where we have two parts to talk about which is called as application software and system software right application software is all about what satisfying satisfying specific user needs satisfying specific user needs while in system software what do we have we have this is nothing but the operating system this is the operating system here okay so that is about computer hardware application software and system software three parts then the other three parts you're talking about are the next part is about networks very important in connectivity so there are two types of networks here connection oriented connection oriented networks and connection less networks so that is connection less networks then we talk about data three concepts here data what is a database as we discuss data and database then we discuss database models and what are the four models that we are discussing here are the hierarchical model network model then we have the relational ship database management system rdbms and lastly object oriented database management system or also shortly called as the oodbms then we have the last set of people called the users right where we have programmers where we have end users where we have technical specialist so we have everybody under that right so that is what is all about now we have a six one extensive coverage guys is only an overview there's lot to catch up in this concept this is one of the extensive concepts in uh, chapter number 2 right then topic number 7 i'm quickly marking up here itself it's called system development life cycle system development life cycle talks about uh, five stages first one talks about system investigation on a system investigation we are doing something called as a feasibility study for which i have a technique for you it's called stol s t o l e schedule feasibility technical feasibility operational feasibility legal feasibility and economic feasibility the five points there in the shortcut right schedule feasibility technical feasibility operational feasibility legal feasibility and economic feasibility so you can keep that in mind that's once asked in the exam as well what are the points that you check in feasibility study or write a short note on feasibility study can be taken care after investigation all that we do is to do system analysis at the end of this stage there is a system analysis or requirement documentation prepared then system design where the blueprint is prepared and then after system design we have system implementation and then last step we have system maintenance where we talk about preventive detective and corrective maintenance right schedule maintenance adaptive maintenance rescue maintenance you have the maintenance schedule to be taken care of that's what system development life cycle or program development life cycle is all about right that's it guys that's what we have in this chapter and then of course topic number 8 is one of the very important topics definite questions from topic number 8 is about latest technologies 
so i don't think uh, i need to discuss on that you have and the latest technologies you have bluetooth your wifi you have laptops smartphones pdas right all that basic stuff and android uh, so wifi android and uh, probably the first one bluetooth right all those have already been asked in the exam so the others have very good potential of being asked so i think you can go with those don't miss the last topic in chapter 2 that's one of the very important things right that's all we have in chapter number 2 i will now cover chapter number 3 on networks